Timmy Creed, pleasure to chat to you. Uh, had you on air with me on Dave Max Drive, where I said I'd do a little bit of a longer chat that we can post digitally because there's a little more to tease out uh, of this. The Trailblazery in collaboration with Mankan Magan. How do I do this time? Jesus. We're about to talk about trying to learn the, the Irish language and the difficulties people might have saying that. I can't even say Mankan Magan's name. <laughs> There you got it. Right? He likes to think he it Monaghan is what he likes. To, uh, Monaghan okay. Magan. Yeah, I, I saw him write about how there's kind of three different ways you can say it. Okay, yeah. This is Skull Scarcha, a hedge school Osquelga. Uh, mm -hmm. It's something people sign up to, they pay for, and it'll run over a series of weeks from, from well, from now, early February through to the end of March. Uh, where, we'll tease out a bit more about you and this, that, and the other, because I've spoken to you before. Well, actually, let's start with that. You are a Cork man from Bishopstown, and I yeah. spoke with you on air before about a play that you wrote. Tell right. us a little bit about what that was about and how that all went. Uh, the play was about, it was a one-man show about my experiences playing GAA in Bishopstown and what it was like. And then uh, the, the moving away from it and the kind of the, the struggle with having, having spent my whole life playing one thing and then moving into a kind of artistic world or seeing that there's other things out there, but always carrying this kind of GA man inside me and the, 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 the kind of the, the difficulties and the obstacles that I met as I went into the world away from the pack, away from the club. Um, like a physic, piece of physical theatre about hurling, about masculinity, about finding yourself, about becoming a man, these kind of things. Um, and you, and you took it to various GAA clubs. What sort of reaction did you get from people? I, I, I remember the time that it, it, it was a very open and honest piece. There was, there was aspects of identity in there and, and what it is to be a man almost, if that's not too grand a statement to give it. What was the sort of, is that true? And what was the sort of reaction? Yeah, I guess it was my, it's my experience of, of me becoming the man that I, I think I was or that I wanted to be or that I, that I was. Um, and yeah, the, the reaction is generally positive. Uh, I think anyone, because I've gone to GA clubs, like to bring anything diverse, but also that's about GA into a GA club, people are very open for open to it and up for hearing some perspective or some reflection on what it's like, because I don't think it's usually talked about like the experience, what the experience that we're going through as part of this group, that isn't hugely spoken of. It's more you do the thing and you continue with your part in the group, but I guess some reflection on it can be positive uh in general the reaction is good and it, it stirs something in people because it has this kind of cracking open of the, the identity a little bit you know it's like can we talk about what's actually going on here a little mm, bit you know? mm, how do people how do people respond to this and well in, I think in a world that maybe previously wouldn't have been uh, but but you in doing so there by create space for others to do the same and that can uh, that can be a something that people will welcome and kind of go well i'm glad someone said it because actually I had all of these things that I wanted to say or yeah I did I, I felt like I wasn't it's, it, it's a universe it's a, it's a personal story but I feel like there's a universality to being part of a group a group of men a GA group playing sport so um, I think that resonates with people um, uh, but I, I like this idea of art and sport coming together uh, and where they meet and where they're different and how yeah. they can be how they can be put into the same into the same the same situation the same performance and that's something i explored as well by by, by bringing a piece of theater to a ga club already there's a mashing of the two there and clearly that is the world that you're moving into that was the creative world the world of of acting is that your principal job how has that been over the last couple of years through um, the turmoil and trouble that we've been through it's been quiet, but I was down in West Kerry for the whole time of the pandemic, and I was very happy to have tools down and to explore what it's like to be living more rurally um, in a, a wild part of the country. And so I was actually, I did, it didn't bother me so much that I wasn't working because I was really getting time to explore what it's like to live more rurally and uh, the, what that offers up. So it wasn't a difficult time, to be honest, like... Um, Good. So it, was, it, was, it was an opportunity. It was yeah. an opportunity, a way out of the city into yeah. a different kind of lifestyle. And presumably, you got to speak Osquelga all the time. Did you get to kind of submerge yourself in 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 a Gaelic culture in a fuller way? Yeah. Well, I was living in in Ceantra, which is Ventry, outside of Dingle, which is an Irish language speaking place. So it's at your fingertips. It's on people's tongues. Mm. You have as much opportunity to speak it as you want to. So you can. And the more you find yourself, like the more you practice or even the little bits of conversation you have that stirs something else, it stirs you to learn a bit more, to go into it a bit more. So 
by surrounding yourself in it, you really immerse yourself. You might not necessarily be like, I wasn't talking it all the time, but by being around it, it builds in you, you know, the, the, the Lee effect or the, the um, what's the word for that? Uh, how fluent you are. It just, it increases by actually just being there, even if you're not speaking it. Hmm. And what sort of level of, of Gaelga did you bring with you to Count Uh I guess. Party, I, party O'Shea country. Party O'Shea country. I guess I would have conversational uh, to advanced Irish. and uh, Now or then? Uh, much better now, actually, than it was going there. So I probably would have been an intermediate conversational, but now I feel like it's constantly improving and being part of the Skull Skarta has re- has kind of reignited another kind of uh, diving into it and okay. another ignition of more learning around it. Right, well, that's a nice little um, segue then back into into that. And we mentioned Man- Mankon Magan. Is this his, uh, or Mon- Monkon Magan? Christ. Um is this is this his did he has he spearheaded this or what's the trailblazery let's start with that so trailblazery is something that kathy scott founded um it could be eight or ten years ago which is like a platform for people who are blazing trails in their own field a platform them to share their experiences to inspire people and to offer ways, different ways of interacting with the world and being in the world. And she does some amazing work in, in across different platforms and uh, in working with different kinds of people. And it was, it's the, it's the brainchild of her and Manafan, the, this Skull Uh She moved her kind of, her, the trailblazer online at the start of the pandemic. And she created a hedge school uh, online, which was a hedge school in, referring to and inspired by the hedge schools that happened in Ireland when schools were were banned and the English were ruling that uh, Irish Catholics, if I'm correct, were were teaching each other about practices in out in the bush because they weren't allowed in school. So, the, so it's slightly on the edge. It's slightly um, a wilder look at how we how we learn and how we live. And so Kathy brought this online. So it's she has this hedge school where she meets people every month or and runs different programs about different things. She has one she does with just women that happen on the, on the full moon. So she's pulling people in who, who blaze trails across different fields and she brings them together and, and for a platform of learning and sharing. And the, the Skull Skirt was kind of, I think it was uh, conceptualized by, I guess, during the pandemic, there was this space for, I guess people are seeing maybe how the world we live in is kind of going in a particular direction and that there's now a, an interest and an opening in people for something else and for maybe to stay contained in Ireland. And it, it does go, it's online, so you can you can access it from anywhere, but this idea that we could be sitting on a pot of gold here mm. and everything we could need to know about how to live and how to live sustainably into the future is we have it on this island and that the language is potentially a tool for unlocking all that because Mm. uh, the 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 language offers a way of looking at the world that if you delve into it it automatically changes your perspective because what words mean what places mean Yes, well, I, I, I would have a danger generally in conversations of taking all sorts of little side roads. But then again, I guess we're filming this digitally, so we don't have the same pressures as you might do if we were chatting on air. Uh, I speak Spanish mm-hmm. and what I find a language gives you um, and, 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 and bits and pieces, because it's a Latin language. I, I studied French in school and in college, so I would have been able to read it, understand quite an amount of it, wasn't so strong in the speaking, and that's always the difficult part of a language. Um, but I still would have a good deal of French. Uh, because I'm Spanish, I can understand some Latin and some Portuguese. Um, uh, and uh, But what, what, what thinking, speaking, uh, and reading, uh, and, and hearing through another language allows you to be is, is a different person. Like, mm-hmm. a language is a way to see the world. And uh, it's... It, I would, whether through COVID or before, um, sometimes use studying the language or learning or reading. First of all, it's absorbing to take on a task like that. But secondly, it actually frees you from the pressures of your day to day life because you're somewhere else. And you can you can actually not you can be a different person, but you are a different person because you're thinking and and speaking it through it through. Anyway, 
There's a freedom in learning another language and it gives you the ability to be another person other than, other than you, you can be many different types of people and language gives you that freedom to be that. that yeah, was my little... I guess, and I know what you're saying that, but I think it's slightly different with the, with the Irish, I think, because when you go to a different country or you learn another language, you're getting a, a lens into a different culture, a different mm -hmm. country, mm -hmm. how they speak, how they communicate with each other. Whereas when you start learning Irish and you're from Ireland, um, it kind of drops you into this kind of, it nearly it nearly drops you into a deeper sense of yourself, I think, mm. because there's an awareness that this language was spoken, this language was has developed on this island about this place. And it kind of opens you up to a kind of a depth in yourself and a way of looking outward on this island that I think is very magical and can offer it gives a lot like there's, there's a lot to be well yes i would agree with you there would there would be a deeper resonance to uh, but, exactly, but, yeah. but i suppose what i was trying to get to was that seeing the world through the gaelic language and with the gaelic language allows you to see it in a different way yeah, uh, yeah. And, and with it being the native tongue of although it's interesting you know you'd wonder what was the language before gaelic came to the country or as you said perhaps a gaelga was developed here on this island uh, yeah. fr from whatever route it came from, from from the wider sort of Celtic family of languages that that includes well, Scots Gaelic came from Gaelga here in Ireland, and there's there's um, you know there's Kimru, uh, uh, and 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 uh, you know there's two branches of the Celtic language of which Gaelga and Scots Gaelic uh, are one branch, and Welsh and and Breton are are, are the other side of it. Um, but uh, yeah, no, there's lots of deep resonances in there that are very interesting and I'd love to explore. And Irish is something that I had a poor attitude myself to in school because I connected it with all things backward and in the past, you know, you know, it's different now. People have a very different attitude to the language. Lots more kids are going through Gale skulls. And I don't, yeah. I think the hang ups that there might have been around the language before are gone, but I certainly had them through school and I had a reaction to the language that that's not something I want to connect to myself. And I'm disappointed that I had that reaction. I'm disappointed that there was that sense around the language for me, whether that was my fault or others, I don't know, but there's a, a freer sense around what the language is and what the language could yeah, be. Yeah, I now. guess it's- And it's I regret, I regret, uh, you know, if, if my teacher is listening, Kevin Wynn, I, you, I'm sorry. Oh, it's to, not your fault, Dave. I know, he used fault. to bring in Planksty into school and everything, you know, and and, and with great, great, you know, um, forward moving Irish music. And, and, and of course, I had no interest, no interest. It was the modern world as I perceived it that I wanted to be a part of. And I just didn't see where that language fitted into it. I yeah. think that's different now. And I, I hope before my time, uh, before I give up this mortal coil that I'll, I'll, I'll bring more Irish into myself and allow it back out of myself. Yeah, and I think a lot of people have that experience of their time uh, learning Irish in school, that there's a kind of uh, a disenchanted nature to what it was. And, and, and very often people just dismiss it as they're going through school. But I think it's, I could be wrong as well, but I get the sense from my time in school, it's taught in a way that's very academic and that's pushing towards your exams in it. That don't you open you up to this other potential magic that I think Skullskart is trying to unpack a bit. That mm. the driacht, oh, the driacht, yes. And like it's when you focus on the results and the exams and how you're going to achieve that, then you're you're kind of skipping over that the mm. the hidden qualities and the hidden gems within it. And I I wonder if if if, if that could be you know um, intermingled with some of the more academic stuff, how that could potentially spark the interest of people who would be yes. interested in that. Yeah. You'd have to hope if you do your whole schooling through through Osgoelga that that would also um, instill uh, a different attitude and ability and, and you know, where, you know, where it's less like I now have 40 minutes where this is my subject and I'm, yeah. you know, it, it's actually just how you, it's the language you use over the course of your day. Interestingly, my mother was educated through uh, Irish all the way through, never spoke a word of it to me. I, I sometimes ask her, I'm like, and she just, I, I, I'm like, like, had you no mass on it at all? Mm -hmm. Like, did it make, like, I, I don't know, it's, she, I don't get a clear answer from her as to why, how did, how did you never, ever, and she, you know, she's none of it now. And you're like, how did you do your entire schooling, Oscar Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Um, it's, it's, it's a little bizarre. Something I mentioned to you on air, though, that I think is slightly interesting, too, is that there might be a sort of a little bit of a cultural discomfort in Irish people, whereby we're, we're, we're so proud of where we're from and who we are. What's weird about it, too, I think, is that in, most countries in the world, the language is literally the number one association with the culture of the country. Yeah, yeah. And yet for us, we're so proud about so many aspects of Irish, but we, we don't seem to link the language to, to ourselves or we feel divorced from it for historical reasons 
that are probably too complex to go through. But I think there's a little bit of a thing in, in many of us that thinks because I'm Irish, I should be able to literally just press a button and it should just flow out of me naturally. And because it doesn't, that, that scares me and annoys me and makes me question why that isn't the case. And therefore I back away and I just sort of hold an attitude of, ah, oh, couldn't, you know, well, couldn't be bothered with that. Um, yeah, it, it's easier to have that attitude than to actually go into the place of learning or to go into the understanding of why you threw it out and why you why you're, you you disengage with it. You know, I think there's definitely a wound there and a shame around it uh, mm. with a lot of people that they feel I get the feeling that they'd love to speak it, and because it's it's present in in, in everything. You know, like you see it in pubs, you see it on the streets, you see people talking, you see it. The, the, the language is here and it is alive, but it's like, I think there's a choice people make that uh, based on the shame around it, that they don't want to go down the road because it's, you know, you kind of have to start from scratch sometimes. And mm. that's a, uh, a process of going back to maybe why you, why you, why you lost, lost faith in it and why you didn't mm. like it. So mm. it's some uncomfort with going back to kind mm. of the roots of yourself and the roots of our, our ancestors mm. and our country and saying, actually I care about this actually I believe this is still living this language is still living and something can be some pos positivity can be gained from it but I, I also think people underdo uh, or underplay how much oh no no I don't have any Irish and then you're like well in comparison to Japanese do you have much Irish? oh well like yeah I mean yeah I can understand sentences and I can say phrases and I understand place names and I un so so you know, like if you had that for any other language, you go, oh, yeah, I've got a bit of that. You would. Yeah. Yeah. If you had really basic level of conversational French, would you be like, yeah, I can speak French. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. But if you had that for Irish, you oh, no, no. Because I, again, I think it's that thing that you're like, I should be rolling off like like I'm an Aran Islander. And I don't know why I picked that. You know, it's because it's, it's, it's you know, also that Gale talk thing, you know, where there's areas, you know, it, it actually is part of the com compartmentalization of it all, too. Yeah, guess, there are yeah. places where, you know, the whole country's a Gale talked. Yeah. Ireland's a Gale tucked. It's yeah, it's yeah, literally yeah. the home of it's the great, Gale. It's a great way of looking at it, you know. It's it's like a sleeping Gale tucked or something. The other places are more alive and they're more awake to it. But mm, yes, you, yes. you see pockets of Gale tucks opening up in cities as well. You know, in Dublin, in Belfast, and uh, driven by the Gale schools, I think. I was very influenced in school. We studied Brian Friel's translations, and I know he recently passed. And there was you know some interesting documentaries about him, and and much mention of that play anyone not familiar with it it was a story of um british cartographers in donegal in the mid 1800s uh being assisted and resisted by by some of the locals as they as they endeavored to map the place and in mapping the place the you know giving names to places they they adapted and anglified the irish place names and we still live in that in between world you know i mean cork doesn't mean anything Kirky means something it has a yeah. like there's there's a hidden layer to us and to this place that that the Irish language brings you into I think that's yeah. some of what you were yeah and even, even in that very like that's such a brilliant uh play his, his play that even in just the idea of the place names of, a, of the country you can learn so much about what is potentially there or what was there and it, it offers a new perspective as to the place, which and kind a of, deeper understanding, a deeper connection. Yeah, um, as opposed to just this kind of generic word that doesn't mean anything, you know, like kill, kill there. You, 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 it means kill Dara, which is the church of the oaks. Yes. So more than likely. Uh, was... Kir Kirky Moor and the Moon, the Great Marsh of Munster, which indicates ecologically what the city was built on. And if you think about it, it probably ruined a, a, an incredible habitat. By, um, by building a city in the middle of the Great Marsh of Munster. Imagine what that must have looked like prior to a development on it. Yeah, um, yeah. Uh, you know, and so on and so forth. It makes me interested then in other place names when I go around the world or, you know, you hear about Victoria Falls and you think, well, hang on a second, Victoria Falls. And then the locals call it Mose O Atunya, the smoke that thunders. And you're like, well, that's much nicer. Yeah, um, yeah. Or, or, you know, uh, Mount Everest. Uh, which is, I think, Sagar Matha and Chung Chumalunga in 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 Nepali and and in Tibetan, and and you kind of feel like, well, they feel like more accurate names, at least yeah. for the the peoples of the place. It's like that's um, like the indigenous nature of the Irish language. It starts to to breathe through the language in a way that was far more connected to the natural world and uh, living amongst the wild. That uh, loads of the reference are kind of are nature based references. 
and which shows how how closely connected people were to that way of living you know mm-hmm. whereas i guess now we, we it seems like we're more and more dis, disconnected and disfranchised with where we came from in terms of we're looking to have a, a kind of a modern sense of homogenous living where everything is kind of the same you know mm. Yeah, no, there's there's a greater depth and a greater understanding for who and what we are. And a man do actually, do you know what? Just before I, I was going to go into um, Mr. M- Manicon Magan. No, there I'm, you go. I'm a, I'm a big fan. Um, he, you know, he he is blazing a trail, isn't he? Oh, by the way, sorry, I just wanted to mention on the trailblazing because I spotted in the uh, nudge humanity forward is is sort of the mission statement of 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 trailblazery. Um, it, it's a lovely idea. Kathy, is that what you said her name was? Hang on, I have her here. Uh, Kathy, Kathy Scott. Scott yeah. Good on she's you, Kathy here. Scott. She's yeah. keeping the trade, yeah. Yeah, nice idea. Hedge School, uh, we, don't, we don't have to get the definitive answer to this too. My understanding of it was in penal times. I mean, was it that Catholics or Nash, or I, I don't know, it's, it's hard to, you know, it's, it, it's unfortunate to describe it uh, through, you know, religious persuasion. Yeah. But effectively in penal times, you weren't able to be educated through us Gaelga, there were only us Berla schools. So yeah. was it that we weren't a, like uh, the Irish natives weren't allowed to be educated, or was it that to be educated it could only be through the English language, and therefore hedge schools sprung I think, up? I think it's the latter. Yeah, you, to, you, the education was through English, and those who wanted to continue a, 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 a learning through Irish, and I guess it meant that the education system then would have been brought from elsewhere. It wasn't this, this thing, the same things weren't being taught as were taught years ago. So I, I, I don't know, but it sounds like it was a new syllabus if people are going to be teaching in English. Yes. Oh, well, yeah. And, and like, it's crazy to think, you know, kind of post famine that you could have. I mean, I, I've, I've read a lot about this. I'm very interested in this whole general sort of thing. And uh, I, I read a suggestion one time that there may well have been a point where it the language slipped so quickly, you could have had... T- grandparents and children unable to communicate with each other yeah, yeah. Like, it's mad and really the trauma that must have occurred which I, I mean maybe you could lay certainly a significant element of the blame on on Gertha Moore the great famine um where people where for parents for their children's sake leave that alone it's not going to help you this is the future. Yeah, it's just a survival element of, of to survive and to earn some money that it was uh, whether you had to leave the country it's the language you'd need or whether you were to access how the country's structures had been imposed and set up, whatever it was, that was the language you needed. And almost, I don't know, but it's still, it's still weird though, how both didn't mix together and stay mixed together. There's, there are other countries in the world where people have lost their language and, and moved to another. We're not exclusive in that regard, yeah. but it's still yeah. interesting as to how it happened and how it didn't stay a part of it. Um, yeah, I think, well, I think if you look at the, the colonized countries around the world, like a lot of them, a lot of English was, or Spanish was brought to those countries. And mm. that is the leading language in those countries now. You yes, know? yes. Although, you know, the, the Quechua, the Aymara, they, they, you know, you go to the places around the world and yes, they'll speak through a European language, but they still, they still have their native tongue that they've held on to. And we, we've not done as good a job of that, but we, we have time to fix it, I, I believe. But I, I do think there is still a kind of feeling of, well, what's the, w- w- why should we be learning Irish? Because it doesn't serve this kind of English speaking global. Well, that was part of what I was trying to even just hint, suggest to people is that first of all, it's a way of seeing the world in a different way. It's actually quite relaxing because you, you, you and, it's, and it's, an, it's an ability to be someone else. And, and free yourself from other aspects of the world that, um, I don't know, it, it, I found it very relaxing to learn another language yeah. um, and freeing to be able to be somebody else. It, it, it's, it's a nice concept. And I know you were saying, well, look, when you're learning Irish, it's not, it's not the same as a, a foreign tongue, let's say, but I still think there's potentially a suggestion to people that, you know, in learning Irish, you'll find it very freeing and relaxing. <laughs> you yeah. know and um and revitalizing you know who doesn't yeah. want that i agree i agree so look uh, let's get a bit more into the detail of this um well maybe you hang on before we do because i, I do have stuff on it uh Manacon magan is doing a tremendous job in in talking up the virtues of the natural world uh, and the language and and, and you, you linked those two things together in this this book i would highly recommend 32 words uh, for field it's a tremendous story the, the recent one my mom got me for christmas as well uh is both you know for the smallies and for the adults and it's yeah, a beautiful um 
it, it, it does bring out the magic inherent in, in Gaelic names for things that just are, aren't always there, uh, uh, Osberla. Um, a squirrel being a tree dog, Madra Cran, and so on and so forth. I'll let people discover it for themselves. It's, it's a further uh, emanation from Manakon Magan, who almost lives a life that I semi-dream of. I, 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 I feel, uh, you know, he's got a he's got a plot of land somewhere in West Mees. I think he's planted a load of trees. Um, very interested in 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 you know being closer to nature and 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 speaking our native language and understanding the the, the lore and the history. And and I'm kind of like the older I get, the more that is attractive and appealing to me. Um, he's he's sort of central to this. So would Kathy Scott have reached out to him and said, "Will we develop an idea?" Or how do you think that came about? I think yeah, Kathy had the idea, and then she she reached out to him, and uh, I think he's he's at the forefront of this kind of resurgence of Irish language and um, interaction with the language and promotion of it. So I think he's the perfect guy to for Kathy to approach and to to link in with. And whereas Kathy has this ability to hold the space and to pull people in from all over the world, and Monacon is in himself just kind of emanating out this this promotion and this living of closer a life close to the natural world and intertwined with irish and so they're they're force like together yeah. and they're 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 developing this as they're going along seeing as what they feel and there's constant feedback from the people who engage with the first the first version of it there's constant feedback how can we make this experience more interactive more easy and more fun to to engage with so again, we'll, it's it's an online series. Um, uh, there is a fee for it. We'll let people discover that for themselves. It's the trailblazery.ie, I think. Is that where people need to go? That's exactly it, yeah. Yeah, the trailblazery. Sorry, the trailblazery.com. There's a forward slash skull scarcha. Um, the scarcha, do, do you have a meaning for me of that or...? Uh, I'm caught. I'm caught out. Ah, I'm caught no out worries. Out I'm sure. I'm sure you'll find out when you when you join. Well, have a, a have a dig there if you wanna. Um, so it's starting February third, running to March thirty first, seven p.m.s on Thursdays. Um, you're actually doing the sort. It's a nine week immersive journey into the heart and soul of the Irish language. Skull Scarch is the Irish school you always dreamed of. Uh, following the success of our inaugural immersion in September 21 we're thrilled to announce semester two and there's quite a list of people we'll go through there in a minute but you're sort of doing like um you know when the I don't know it's the the the, the follow-up on the Tuesday night is that what you'll be hosting to me yeah so so the 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 main bulk of the 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 classes and the learning and the engagement happens on a Thursday evening and then the following Tuesday there's a platform for the for people learning Irish for the first time beginners there's there'll be an hour for beginners and an hour for more advanced where it's a space to to maybe put some of the things that you learned the previous week or some of the things you found that you delved into yourself any kind of any any thoughts that you've had from from one session you can kind of play them out and share them and try them in the next session so uh it's kind of like an open circle like a circle core the following week where you can practice and to hear other people's experiences of it okay and so wait the whole, so the whole time it's just like building this kind of resource this resource and this sharing of materials where people can jump into and realize that it's all at the at our fingertips the languages all the resources are the the, the people who are blazing trails and it's the that it's it's really close to us all we have to do is begin to look to look for it and mehel na changa mehel na tanga shine I'm going, to, I'm going out on a limb. I, I, I mean, honestly, like, I mean, I, I'm not trying to like. Oh, you're really, you're really. Well, like, I'm, like, yeah, well, you know, I've bought the, I've not dug into them as much as I like. Like, it is, it is tricky, and you do come straight into Lenition. Uh, uh, is that the, you know, and, and all sorts of aspects that are, um, that I'd love to ask questions about because I'm kind of someone who needs to be able to figure out um why it is we're doing what we're doing um and maybe sometimes in language it doesn't work Le the kale the kale august lehen le lehen you know there's aspects of it that i that i remember the on tour you know the the, the way that letters appear at different points and i it, and pronunciation uh, yeah lenition yeah that is it you know there's some complicated aspects that i'm kind of like but why machiak as opposed to machak and so on and so forth um, but I guess yeah. maybe that's part of the getting the too nitty gritty that that almost puts people off, is it? It does, yeah. And the grammar is always in every language. The grammar yes. is tricky, and it's not the it's not the kind of the, the, the and yet they're important concepts to grasp. You know, yeah, in terms of the speaking, that if you if you can have the foundation of that, then it allows you to 
to speak to people and to engage with on a really basic level, which yes. can often be the foundation that you need to kind of move up the move up the rungs of the ladder. Mm. I found out scart means bush, or ah, means, bush school, or it means a crow, or it means a yelp. Uh, so presumably guess, in this case, bush, bush for the hedge exactly. school, and I think it's kind of referring to uh, this idea. I think that John Moriarty, the philosopher, has like that. We are as close to the bush people. We're more closer to the bush people than we maybe are, than we realize, you know, that's, that's what we've come from, the bushes. We've come from the trees. Ireland was totally covered in trees before it was all cut down and, and brought to England, you know. So it's like trying to trying to refine this connection to the bush, like to the bush, the bush part of ourselves. OK, so if, so if, if um, people are intrigued and sign up or whatever, like so 7 p.m. of a Thursday, is it a two hour session? Uh, about that between an hour and a half and two hours yeah and um, usually, so yep Kathy usually does an opening kind of a meditation and then you meet the guide the 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 person who's going to bring you on a journey of their experience with the language and then there's a lesson a for a half an hour and then we usually finish with some live music so it's a full-on hour and a half like it's jam-packed with with mm. learning and, and and again sorry just to clarify because I think you did but I'm not sure I grasped it so that happens on the Thursday for the hour and a half yeah, and, and there's a follow-on on the Tuesday to build on what you might have learned on the Thursday yeah, ahead of the next Thursday's one. Exactly, exactly. You have an option to do it. To do it. well, it's, it's all an option, but you have it's, it's yeah. another another platform where you can engage with it. So Moraidney Kongal from TG Cahar, I think, is in there. Um, I think she's from TG Cahar. She's certainly presenter, actor, and Moonshore. Liam yeah. Wainley of Hot House Flowers. There's quite a Cork uh, connection. Claire Sands, who's a lovely girl. I know Claire. Has some great music coming out. So on Tommy Tiernan recently. Uh, Irla or Leonard is another Cork man uh, uh, with the music running deep through him. Carmel Winters, she ran a project down west. She got onto me and I haven't, I'm going to do a bit of a Zoom chat with her on that because she collaborated with uh, Manicon. Uh, why, why, like, okay, give me one more go. Why Manicon? I'm going to um, get it. I'm going to get it. Yeah, it's all the one. It's all the I one. I know, I know. And maybe that was part of my problem with Irish too, where you kind of like, ah, oh, and then you just stop. Yeah, uh, but exactly. she she ran a project with him down in, in, in well in West Cork. She's I know she's very Ballydear Hub based because I meet her down there in uh, Levis's with with Joe and Caroline oh, nice. and um nice. and and you know loved her uh, uh, film that opened Cork Film Festival a couple of years ago. She's a powerhouse yeah. of a woman herself, Carmen. Yeah. Right. Um, I think a mallow a mallow filmmaker originally, but living down in West Cork, and she yeah. was inspired by the thirty two words for field, or maybe even from the the the. Um, the tree dogs, banshee fingers and other Irish words for nature. But she started putting up um, little things. I don't know. Are you familiar with that? Sorry if I'm maybe I'll. No, tell me what she was doing. Yeah, well, it was similar to what Manicon does. I, I need to dig in. And she got on to me and said, yes, I'll, that sounds really interesting. I'll do something with you. But in windows and shop windows and in places. Oh, around, really? Yeah. Really? And she was just hanging these things up to to awaken people again, I guess, oh, to the language. Yeah. So I don't know were they all nature based or not. Because um, I think she was she did the first round of the school and I think she got a lot from it. And maybe that's really, where that came from. Possibly. And she was really, I'm, I'm not sure if that came from it. So now she's back as like a, a speaker. Yeah. Because yeah. She well, maybe I'll, I'll dig that out with her. I'll, I'm, I'm inspired now to get onto her uh, sooner because it'll tie in nicely with this chat that we're having here. Yeah. Um, and Timmy Creed, yourself. So there's a good lot of Cork people in there. Uh, it's uh, supported by Forrest Nagelga, a dynamic Irish language learning experience that weaves culture, creativity, heritage, folklore, and indigenous wisdom with individual social and ecological well-being. Sinead, you're okay. It sounds great to me. Gohintok, Timmy Creed, Gormila Mila Mahavat. Okay, Fatrote, Stan Lath.